Or like every opportunity I got, I'd be like, hi Ryan, hi Ryan, <laughs> hi Ryan, what do I do next? Hi Ryan, what do I do next? When you're at camp, I think, and you're speaking to the campers mm -hmm. and they find out like summer camp isn't a thing, they just can't like... Yeah, they can't like... like, like, <laughs> like the craziest thing ever. Gosh, I think my mum drove me to Manchester, got on a coach <laughs> with all these like strangers oh I didn't know and drove to Paris and then went to camp there. What are your best snacks to buy in Walmart? Hi, I'm Fionn. And I'm Libby. And welcome to the Camp Leaders podcast, where we're going to talk all things summer camp, travel and America. Um, so let's start from the beginning. So first of all, what kind of made you sign up for camp and why was it Camp Leaders specifically? Um, yeah, just talk a little bit more about why you kind of signed up in the first place. So weeks. for me, I wish I had more of like a motivational story, but my <laughs> cousin did it and I knew I always wanted to do it. So from she probably went when I was about nine. Mm -hmm. And then from then, I just always knew that it was like, a thing and that I wanted to go. So I just went through camp leaders, to be honest. I did put a little bit of research into it, but to be honest, mainly just because she always like, go through camp leaders. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so it's just always been something that like I knew I wanted to do from when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was just kind of waiting for the, the time to come around. Really, yeah. yeah. What was it for you? Um, I'd say it was similar, but not like a family member. It was just, I'd heard of camp leaders through uni when I went um, to do my undergrad. So they came in to do a talk when I was doing a module called working in the USA. So um, they came in and kind of introduced the program a little bit to me. And I was just like, sounds perfect. I know I wanted to go to camp, but I didn't kind of know what agency to go through. Because mm -hmm. um, I knew there were so many out there. I was kind of looking around thinking, oh, I don't know which one to mm -hmm. choose. Um, so when camp leaders obviously came in and did the talk, I was like, this just kind of fell on my lap a little bit. I was like, well, I'm kind of, I'm going to go with them Bias. now. They seem great. <laughs> yeah. Like um, the guy that came in to the talk was lovely. So it was just, yeah. And after that, it was kind of like just an easy application process, even though it was still a scary thing to do. Just kind of um, having that support there from someone was just really good. Um, but no, did you look kind of into any other agencies or anything as well when you no. were looking? Was it just because your cousin had said camp leaders? L you were literally, like, like I, th yeah. I remember there was like a table on a website, I don't know what website it was, but they had mm -hmm. all the different agencies and like a breakdown of what they did and stuff. But I think the only one I actually like registered my interest with mm -hmm. was Camp Leaders and then Matt called me. Um, okay. I don't really remember to be honest what was like said on the mm -hmm. call, but yeah, Matt called me and then from there I just kind of went with it. But I signed up like so early on in the season. Like I like, yeah. but I think because I know and I wanted to do it for ages, then, so I was kind of waiting for when I turned 18. Mm -hmm. I sent a message on Facebook. I was like, can I go when I'm 17 <laughs> if I'm going to turn 18 when I'm out there? <laughs> Nobody replied. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so then when I turned 18, it was COVID anyway. So yeah. I had to wait until I was in my first year of uni. And then I signed up in like the July. And then, yeah, that, that was it really. Never, never yeah. looked back. No, fair enough. How quickly after you signed up did you have a place at camp? Do you remember? I was... Like I was so on it, like it, like <laughs> I would literally every single day or like every opportunity I got, I'd be like, hi Ryan, hi Ryan, hi Ryan, what do I do next? Hi Ryan, what do I do next? So I think I signed up in the July mm -hmm. and then as, as soon as I was, as soon as I was ready to hire, I went on, on review, not to, not to brag. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as soon as I was ready to hire, I went on review and then I think I probably had my place in like October probably. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. That's quite early on then. Yeah, literally yeah. just spent the rest of the year emailing Ryan asking what else I needed to do. <laughs> um, I, I liked I liked being organized though, so I liked mm -hmm. knowing where I was going and everything. The only thing that I struggled with was like kind of running out of things to do. Not necessarily running out, but you yeah. know, when you're waiting for the visa section to open and like I was just like, I wanted something to like-, <laughs> yeah. like You wanted get, to get going get, with Yeah, it. get me excited. So I started like shopping for camp, like stupidly <laughs> early, like just little things like socks, mm -hmm. um, stupidly early. But yeah, did you, when did they come into your uni? Like, did you sign up early or? I think it was like September time or something oh, right, okay. like so, that. Yeah. So it was quite early that I decided to do it. Um, Cause we had loads of different options when they came in to um, the uni. It wasn't just like camp leaders and uh, camp. It was, it? you could do maybe like an internship in the US um, and things like that. And it was like semi-funded um the internships but you would have to pay like a lot more and yeah. um just seemed a little more structured is, and obviously is that, that why you camp. chose camp then just because it was like more um, structured i'd say one of the reasons um but i'd always wanted to do camp anyway and i thought it's just like the perfect time to do it anyway yeah, yeah. what year of uni um, were you in second year, second year i think yeah i was gonna do it first year of uni but then i feel like you're just so stressed out yeah, after first year I, of uni. I, think I, I was the i was ended up going in second year not first year yeah. actually yeah it was my second year because mm -hmm. first year was still like a bit 
lo- lockdown-y. Oh, okay, yeah, of course, a bit, yeah. Bit, but I think I, if I could have gone first year, yeah, I think I would have. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, my cousin just, cause at the, so my cousin went on to be a primary school teacher. So in the, when I used to have like summer holidays, I used to go and help her like get a classroom ready for the next year. Mm-hmm. And then we were in there and then she was like, are you ever going to do this camp thing? And I was like, <laughs> oh yeah. And then I remember, cause I went through it quite quickly. I remember I was in the kitchen once and my dad was like, have you like thought about this? Like, you know, you're like, paying to go and I was like yeah yeah and he's like are you sure you want to do it yeah <laughs> yeah no so I feel like it's so different to anything that you kind of ever do yeah. when you're younger yeah. in the UK um because I know it's such a big culture out there to kind of go to summer camp huge, and huge. Um, even if it's like a day camp still or like yeah. a overnight camp I feel like that's not overnight camps here aren't really that common unless no. you kind of go like, to the school like did you do anything like that when you were yeah, younger like, if you remember um, there was one in our school but I'd only do it for like a week in the holidays because we used to go to my nan and granddad's anyway. Um, so for that week, but it was just like the, the after school club people just did like one through the holidays. So we used to go to it for like a week, yeah. but it wasn't really like a summer camp. But like when you're at camp, I think, and you're speaking to the campers mm-hmm. and they find out like summer camp isn't a thing, they just can't like- Yeah, they it's, can't it's like- It's like, <laughs> like the, the craziest thing ever that like summer camp isn't a thing here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because I feel like it's, Obviously you see it in films, like yeah. the camp rock and the parent trap. And it's like those films, but like, it's not, it's not like it's, yeah. They've got the right like idea, the concepts there. But we had like, did, had you done anything um, like it? I had to be fair. Had and I think that was a big part of me getting the job in the interview because I didn't really have a lot of experience working with kids. I had like a little bit mm-hmm. of kind of work experience at a primary school and things like that. But um, my camp director kind of wanted a little bit more. So I used that, obviously I went to camp myself as a kid a oh, little bit. Um, yeah. So have you heard like PGL, I think? PGL, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so no school, like schools go there on school trips and things like that. But I went by myself when I was, I think nine or something yeah, like yeah. that. I did like four nights. No first, way. Just there, like oh by my myself. God. And then I went to Paris with, PGL as well for like a couple of weeks I and kind of you could do that yeah that was when I was like 13 14 though so you had yeah. to be a little bit older I think to go to that one um you just kind of we got on a coach I think my mum drove me to Manchester got on a coach <laughs> with all these like strangers oh I didn't God. know and drove to Paris and then went to camp there um but it was kind of different so you weren't kind of in cabins or anything you yeah. were in um dorm style bunk beds and things so it's a little bit kind of different yeah, I know yeah. there are some camps like that in the US but it wasn't kind of like traditional yeah kind of camp we went to like Disneyland and stuff so it wasn't really like that, that's the camps that, in America that's so cool. but I feel like that set me up a little bit maybe more yeah, to like know you, what to expect what to ish. expect and stuff yeah. um but still obviously going as a going to camp as a kid anyway and going as a counselor is like slightly different anyway obviously because you're in like the different yeah but kind you've of still atmosphere. got that kind of like experience and I think as well that'll help like you can relate to the kids because even when yeah like if my campers are ever homesick I'm like like me too girl like like, <laughs> like just don't don't worry like like you know we're away from home as well so yeah. you get it so I think as well it helps you like relate to it mm-hmm. through that I guess really yeah I realized that we've just spoke about summer camp a lot but we've not actually addressed kind of what is summer camp so what is summer camp to you like give a little brief description for anyone that might not kind of be aware I mean of it. I think in like a literal sense it's like again we've been talking about the culture but it's a huge culture in America so we're like the kids so Mm-hmm. I would say most camps, at my camp anyway, six or sixteen ish. Um, yeah, they'll go away for a summer camp, so it's more like commonly for them to get like life experiences. Like, there's a big culture of it in America, obviously, and I know a lot of my campers, their parents went. So yeah, so most of the kids will be away. It depends on how long the camp is. Mm-hmm. Um, some kids might go to a camp that's like a week long. Some might go to a camp that's like ten weeks long. It really depends. Um, yeah, and they basically just go there. Some camps will specialize in certain activities. Like, I mean, I'm telling you that your camp specializes <laughs> in a certain activity. Yeah. Uh, like my camp's a traditional one. Obviously, yours is soccer. Um, yeah, and the kids just go and spend time there, having fun, mm-hmm. meeting new people, and then I think as well, the camp to them really becomes like a family. Like for a lot of my campers, anyway, I know they're going back for like their fifth or sixth summer. Like they mm-hmm. they keep going back. We have like awards for every year like every certain amount of years you go back Mm -hmm. so yeah I just think it's a huge thing and like to summarize it just like like the parent trap like camp rock like the yeah they're going away spending their summer doing something that they love and that they do constantly but to me personally like what is summer camp I don't know (laughs) without without being a bit cringe really (laughs) you can be cringe (laughs) um, no I 
I don't know. I love it. Like it's, I feel like I get to be a kid when I'm at camp. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's cause I really relate to the campers and I feel scared. I'm going away from my mum and yeah. dad. I'm going there to meet new friends, just like they are, to try new things, just like they are. Um, so yeah, that, that same experience just for, for me really, if that makes sense. But, yeah, no, I feel like it just makes sense. I feel like I've got a very similar perception of it as well. Um, cause I don't think I realized there were so many different types of camps no. as well. So when I went out to camp, I didn't really do much research on other camps that are out there just because I had the interview with my camp director and I thought, oh, perfect. Didn't yeah. really think too much into it, just kind of went all in. Um, so for my camp, it's a, a specialist soccer camp where the kids will come for around four nights um, and then some will stay over the weekend, but not many. So it's quite a small camp with about mm-hmm. like 170 kids per session. Um, which runs a little bit differently to some other camps as well. Yeah. Like yours is a traditional camp where they're yeah. there for three to six weeks overnight. That's and something I always find mad, like how different every camp is. Like I can't yeah. Im- imagine my camp being like like yours, but you probably can't imagine like being with the same yeah. kids for like six weeks. So that's what I always find crazy about it. Like how different every camp is. Even the mm-hmm. office speaking to different people, like obviously like some people's are like all one gender or like religious ones. Like I just find it so, in- I feel like I could talk yeah. about it all day. Like <laughs> just sit there and like compare different things that people do. Like even like, how do you sing happy birthday at camp? Yeah. Like everything is just so different. It's just like different traditions, isn't there? But it all, everyone has the same experience and like the yeah. good experience that I've spoke to, but it's all kind of different traditions different, yeah. and like crossovers sometimes. Yeah. Like you said, different birthday songs yeah. and like campfire songs should probably sing very similar things. But um, like just everything's like slightly yeah. tweaked but I think that's what makes each camp like so special mm-hmm. like you couldn't pay me to go to like I think my camp is my camp like I, I wouldn't yeah. go to a different camp because that's mine but then there's people that go to different camps like mm-hmm. a new one every summer which I think is just like so cool like, yeah I think it. I'd love to experience another one but I also wouldn't because yeah no, I wouldn't want to go to a different yeah. camp that I've like I would to. like I'd visit and then yeah. like go back go back to my camp yeah. But yeah no I think I always think that's so cool people who go to I'd love to just sit there and like have a graph of like every everything they noted from yeah. each different camp <laughs> I know yeah just because there's just so many out there mm-hmm. obviously yeah. like we work with over 500 different camps which is insane mm-hmm. the fact there's one in like you know yeah. every state as well I just I'd like yeah. even like with stuff like that though so my we went on a trip at my camp this summer we went to toronto and there was okay. like other camps in the hotel and some of them were literally down the road like one of my campers saw one of her friends from school in the same hotel in toronto and it was from like, a different camp yeah yeah oh wow. different, yeah it was mad but yeah no that's something that i like i would love to just like read like a written review of like every camp like <laughs> yeah. i just like a top trump card of every single camp <laughs> like i just think it's so cool yeah but yeah so with getting placed with camps when did you say you found your place um, I can't remember the exact shakes so it was back in 2018 um, a while ago <laughs> but I think it was around it was like before Christmas I'm pretty sure before um, before the holidays from what I remember um, because one camp reached out to me at the beginning it just didn't feel right after the initial interview so mm-hmm. I was like oh I'll risk it and kind of like wait yeah. for another one um and I'm glad that I did that to be fair I think you kind of know when you come off an interview yeah. if it's because I've had one where it's not felt right and then one where it has felt right so I kind of I feel like you would know after it obviously you had one, I had one. interview right well, and you kind of knew after that as well yeah that- but at the same time I didn't know that you could say no to camp so <laughs> like obviously my cousin who went to camp she mentioned to me like oh I could probably try and put you in touch with my camp and I was like no I'm not allowed like I, I, I can't, I can't, I'm on, I'm on review of this camp, like yeah. no. But then I'm so glad, like, mm-hmm. although her camp is great, like I'm so glad that I found mine and went to mine. But yeah, so I literally, I interviewed with them and that was, that was it. So yeah, I was on review with them. My like staff and director at the time, he rang me and then we arranged an interview for mm-hmm. the next like week or so, I think. And then yeah. that was it. It was but I, I knew like when I was on the call and I'd, I'd done so much research. Mm-hmm. Like I, from when I was like on review with them, I literally was like every single website. I was like analyzing, <laughs> analyzing them, see what it was like. So yeah, I, I knew I wanted to go there, like mm-hmm. like going into the interview. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's just, I was hoping that they offered me it. Cause I just didn't realize that you could like chat to mm-hmm. several camps. I thought it was like, yeah, like, proud but obviously it's not (laughs) yeah like what needs to find like the right camp so yeah yeah. exactly but no I'm so glad now so Mm -hmm. I I mean I don't know if 
in the interview. Like I, I knew it was the com- right comp for me, but I've got nothing to compare it to. But I'm s- yeah. like so glad. I'm so glad. I, I feel like you just get the feeling. Like after yeah. they've explained what the comp is like, yeah. and you've kind of spoke to the, it could be the director or the staff in yeah, person yeah. that you have the interview with. I feel like you just kind of know. Yeah, after my, that. you get the yeah, you get the vibe. Like a, you get the good vibe. A set like staff in person. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, I can't. What I was about to say then. <laughs> um, some something about getting placed at placed at camp. Yeah, but yeah, um, I found my interview really ch- mm-hmm. chill. To be fair, what was cool was the guy who did my interview, the staff and director. He he had a really like funny accent, and I couldn't quite make it out. Yeah, and he was from Scotland, but had moved to the states. So, because I was at uni in Newcastle, and oh. he said something to me about like Newcastle, and I remember thinking like how how do you know about Newcastle? Like, yeah. you, <laughs> what, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I like clicked halfway through. So he like got the whole, like being international. So yeah. it really like put me at ease, but that's same as- Same as my yeah, camp yeah. director, yeah. So my camp director and his wife actually met at your camp. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they did, so they did. Um, <laughs> but no, he's from England. So again, with the accent, I couldn't really place it because yeah. he'd lived in the US and- um, sounds a little bit Australian, I think, because of the combination yeah. of the two accents together. I wonder how long you have to be there for if you can't uh, accents change. Yeah, because I feel like when I you're feel there... like I've been there for like a month, my accents start changing yeah. a little bit. Yeah, like but when... I don't know if that's because you're around the kids and everything. Even with like phrases and stuff. Yeah, I remember when I got home from camp, like my first year, and I was out with my friends, and then I said gas station instead of petrol, and I was like, no, no, <laughs> bathroom. Yeah, I can't believe I've done this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the language is like a, yeah. a big one that you kind of like pick up on when you're out there. Because mm-hmm. if I say to my campus, put your rubbish in the bin, they're all going to laugh yeah. at me and not put the rubbish <laughs> in the bin. So please can we put our... Trash? Is, it tra- is it trash in the garbage or garbage in the trash? Garbage in the trash. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one or the other. Same with like the trainers. They don't say trainers. Yeah, it's tennis shoes. Or sneakers. sneakers. Yeah. yeah. Sneakers on, sunscreen. We put our sunscreen on. Yeah, because I went to a football camp as well. I didn't know that football boots were called cleats. Cleats? Yeah. yeah. Someone was like, oh, where's my cleats? And I was thinking, I don't know what you just said. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I think there needs to be like a... A translation yeah, kind um, of thing. <laughs> read, reading it on the train. Because you do pick it up, but some things like people say and you're just like... Yeah, you're just not along until it's cool. like a weekend and you're like, oh, that's, that's what, what it means. means. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the, the campers, my campers have never had a problem with address it for what, what yeah. i'm saying that's different <laughs> yeah cleats i can't even think of mm, i, can't think, I think like time. garbage cleats garbage um, yeah then like well. top they yeah. say like shirt mm-hmm. like put a, put a top on and yeah. you would never call trousers pants, pants. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a no-go yeah. i realized that pretty quickly yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but no i think that's why it's nice as well that at camp there's so many different international yeah. staff and um people from kind of everywhere because then you get to learn other cultures and other yeah like lingos and everything whilst you're at camp because yeah. like I mean I, I feel like you probably had Australian staff there as well oh, but yeah. even with like flip-flops they call them thongs yeah like, <laughs> like for the first time I was like what? I don't know where your thongs yeah. have gone <laughs> like, my um my co so one of the girls that I lived with mm-hmm. um my first summer she was from Mexico and that was oh, like, okay. yeah, so that was really nice. So there was me, obviously, from England. Mm-hmm. Um, one girl, Sandra, she was from Mexico. And then two of the other girls were from the States. But one of mm-hmm. the girls had been to that camp as a camper. So oh, she, nice. Yeah, so she'd grown up there. And then she was mm-hmm. a staff member. So that I feel like we got, like, one of... One of yeah. everyone, like it was, one, it was, yeah, it was so, yeah, like, yeah. we were all, like, had, like, a different background with coming yeah. to camp, which was... um that was so nice Mm -hmm. um but it was cool as well with jade the girl who'd been to camp growing up it was so cool to kind of get her perspective on counselors and stuff and like yeah what what was good that we did what was bad that we did like she could kind of say like oh when i was a camper like yeah i hated when counselors did this this and this and i'm like (laughs) right down don't do that noted but yeah and then this year in my bunk we were all international so Mm -hmm. Two of the girls from Ireland, there was me, and then another girl from Newcastle. So three out of four of us went to the same uni, which was just... Oh, wow. Just mad. Like, we all lived so close to each other. Yeah. But yeah, I think... And the kids loved us all kind of, like, being international. Yeah, like they do. They love to mock your accent, but they also do yeah. love to learn new things yeah. about, like, England that they didn't really know before. Yeah. And then I think I love to learn stuff from, like, them as well. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's probably why I can't hire international staff, really, because... I think so, Yeah. 
that's like a big part of it for the kids like getting away and yeah seeing different people from like different walks of life as well that they might not literally like yeah. encounter or yeah. haven't encountered in their life as well when i was a kid like american it was like a Hannah Montana. That was, yeah. That, that was it. I don't think I'd met an American no. person until like, I went to yeah, Well, yeah. no, I definitely did because I've been to America before then, but <laughs> I feel like unless I've been to America, I'd not like met an American person in England yeah, or anything, yeah, so. Yeah, that's like literally like for me, like growing up, especially at that age, like America for me was Disney Channel, that was it. And my dad had to stop yeah. me from watching Hannah Montana because I used to put an accent on, so I was banned. <laughs> banned. Banned. banned from American people. So yeah, I, I would have loved that. Do you think you would have liked camp, like as a camper? Yeah, definitely like the like American summer camps are insane, like the facilities yeah. that they have yeah, yeah. and everything. I think I would have absolutely loved that, like going to high ropes and then going to the pool next minute and then going out on like a jet ski and stuff. I feel yeah. like it's just... Yeah, completely different to what I experienced at the camp I went to when I was younger. Because mm -hmm. that was, obviously you did like kind of swimming and high ropes and things, but I feel like the different facilities in the US summer camp and the yeah. traditions as well, it's more of like a family feel. Yeah, um, I love The it. one I went to in England wasn't as such a family feel, which is fine, but I feel like the ones in America, you kind of, they keep going back every year and they're excited like for friends, camp. And yeah. yeah, like you said, meeting all the international counsellors and stuff like that, just kind of... Um, yeah, it just feels a little bit different. Do you think you would have loved to go to camp? I feel like you would have. <laughs> yeah, I would have. But then I think I would have been, like, I don't like high ropes. I don't like, uh, okay. like, water skiing. Like, I like yeah. being on the floor. Yeah, we could do, like, the arts yeah, and crafts. No, yeah, I was going to say, I think I would have loved more of, like, an arty camp. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I would have absolutely loved all, like, the traditions and stuff. Like, yeah. like we have colour war at our camp. Like, I always think that if I was a camper, I would have been like mm -hmm. right I would have absolutely loved that yeah but I think I think I would have got a bit homesick to be honest mm. if, if I was if I was a camper I feel like it's normal though like, oh yeah yeah 100%. a few of the campers get kind of homesick and it yeah. is like normal as long as they're still enjoying themselves yeah and they might have like a little five minute cry and then I, get back up and yeah, join I think in. that's again another like great thing about international staff members because like we we get it we can relate yeah like yeah, yeah like it's, <laughs> it's it's one of those that like you can really like relate to your campers on but then yeah. at the same time like especially we call them camper counselors at our camp like the people that have been there mm -hmm. been a camper and then now work there like yeah. they get it they've been campers as well to celebrate the first episode of this season of the camp leaders podcast we're giving one of you the opportunity to win a camp leaders merch bundle which includes one of these lovely limited edition gibbets so to enter, head over to our Instagram at Camp Leaders Official and find the post that's announced in the competition. And all you need to do is on that post is comment the state that you want to travel to the most. You can find full terms and conditions on our website, but best of luck. Um, but yeah, in terms of states you want to travel to, um, when you first went to camp, did you have any idea what state you wanted to go to? Did you know what part of America? Did you have any kind of preferences like for beforehand? camp? Yeah, so did you have any thoughts or feelings of where you wanted Not to go really or... like I know I said about my cousins camp earlier but I do think I was quite open-minded with it all mm -hmm. I, be, I had Florida in my mind for some reason but I wasn't okay yeah I, I wasn't a rogue one yeah, I yeah. know <laughs> I, I feel like I really fancied Florida but I wasn't too kind of concerned about it really like mm -hmm. I wasn't really on my mind yeah. but when I when I got put on review with my camp and I saw it was New York I was like <gasps> yeah like I was so happy that it was <laughs> that it was New York but to be honest like I genuinely don't think location's that big of a deal like I think no. your camp's a lot more kind of central to things than mine is mine I feel like mine's a bit more rural than yours but I quite mm -hmm. like mine being kind of in the middle of nowhere like you can yeah. is it Springfield you can drive into yeah but if I mis misunderstood. It's <laughs> it's it's not... Springfield, Massachusetts is not really much there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's kind of a, it's Simpsons. like four hours. Well, yeah, there's, I think there's a Springfield in like 35 states. That's why the Simpsons is called Springfield, fun fact. Um, so no one knows She's where it's actually meant to, set, <laughs> meant to be set. Um, but no, from mine, you could travel into like Boston, I guess. Okay. But it's like about a two hour drive. Uh, and then New York is about a, two and a half three hour drive mm -hmm. or something like that so it seems like it's closer to stuff just because it's like where it is physically located but it's yeah. still kind of like quite a long drive ish which i liked again like you said you'd like that as well yeah um kind of like being in the middle of nowhere and then yeah it was like we, after camp i'd go to travel yeah, really. yeah that's what yeah mm. were you bothered about where your camp was or not really no i really 
I think I did really want California. I don't know did why. You, yeah. Maybe that's just because. No, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair yeah. <laughs> but then I kind of got that on my head. I was like, you know, it's really far away and maybe this area of America would be good. I kind of had an open mind. I wasn't going to limit like, myself to one location yeah. just because it was more on the camp. I don't, you know, I went to California after camp traveling. So mm. I think that's probably why I ended up going there traveling as well, just because I was like, oh, I didn't get to go to camp there, but maybe I can go and travel. So it's absolutely fine. Um, but I think it was important for me to go in with an open mind with location De- and definitely. not get bogged down on kind of one yeah. specific location. I think, although well, my camp's in New York, like you you can get to New York City in about an hour and a half, but like you wouldn't yeah. know that it's in New York. It could mm-hmm. be in like any state. Yeah. Like it's just, we have this little town near our camp and there's like, I say town, it's like a small yeah. line <laughs> of shops. Like there's um, like a Dunkin' Donuts there, there's a Dollar Tree. Mm-hmm. And then like a couple of restaurants. Yeah. That's it. But then like a 20 minute drive away, there's a mall, which is cool. And, and a Walmart oh, okay. as well. So convenient. Though. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's not too bad. And it's quite nice to have them like, so yeah, if you need anything, I feel like most camps are kind of in like rurally areas as Definitely. well. Um, obviously, cause they're going to have activities like, like step before, like high ropes and things. You kind of need to be in rural areas in to have that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There obviously are some camps in the city and mm-hmm. like, that would be, you There's know. someone at like university campuses and stuff as well. I think yeah. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. It's obviously a different experience, but yeah, that's why definitely. we work with so many different camps as well. Just to kind of, everyone kind of wants something different. I think yeah. maybe like the tech side and you'd mm-hmm. maybe go to one of those university kind of camps, um, which is kind of cool that that's on offer as well. I'm not sure if I personally would have enjoyed that as much, but I, I understand why people yeah. would. It's just not, that wouldn't be for me, but it would definitely be for someone else. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, no, but like it being rural has nev- never really been like a, no. A stress. I quite like that. Like I've got this like random little connection to this yeah. random little place. <laughs> that in, you never would have gone to in otherwise. New York, yeah. And it's one of those places where you see people in the shop and it's like, like you live here? Like, yeah. wow. <laughs> like, like that is crazy like, that you, you live here. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's, it's accessible enough to other places, but that mm. just wasn't something that like crossed my mind in the application. Like I didn't, yeah, I didn't know how rural they were. I didn't know if they were close to cities, far away from cities. I feel like mm. it wasn't something that would have like ever swayed me on or off a camp. No, I think me neither. Really, I think it was quite nice, like you said, having like that little town now that you can yeah, it's like go to. Oh, yeah, so I think the my town was called East Otis or something, and it honestly had a post office one restaurant and an ice cream shop and then like a gas station and that was it they just called it a gas station then um (laughs) but that was literally it in that town you could walk that was like 45 minute walk which is quite a 45 minute walk into the town yeah but it was like a five minute drive it was just really like fast roads that you'd walk on basically i thought yours i don't know why i thought yours was like more no i mean you could kind of drive i think ryan's was ryan's was pretty accessible i think i'm pretty sure his was like nearer a town yeah i feel like i remember him saying something like that yeah um so but no you could kind of drive to locations and the camp were quite good with offering transport yeah. say on a night off if you know you're like i really need to go to walmart i've run out of i don't know body wash or like yeah. shampoo or something and um, then they'd be quite good at kind of setting things up or international staff if they had cars and things like that then you could kind of ask them like oh, i need something from yeah. the shop Please um and it'd be only like a 20 minute drive or something yeah. like that so it wasn't you know, really, really out of the way. It's just you couldn't really walk to many places, yeah, yeah. which was fine because I'd rather get a there anyway. anyway. <laughs> yeah. Was yours near other camps? Yes, um, quite a few camps. Oh, was in it? that Because it was in the Berkshires. So um, that area is just obviously mountains, lakes, trees. Oh. So it's perfect yeah. for, um, yeah. I think there was probably about, I want to say like six camps. That's in so my cool. area but you'd go around a corner and there'd be another camp no way it was just yeah there was, that's why you'd see different people from different camps when you go to restaurants that's so good that, on your nights that's off cool and stuff. that'd be cool like if you know if you knew somebody else going yeah. going to one of them yeah there definitely. was one place that we go for days off um skinner's falls I, it's so it's like a river mm-hmm. and one side of the river is on new york and one side's on pennsylvania but we used to always see other camps there uh, yeah because yeah. there's loads in pennsylvania as yeah, well isn't there yeah. loads of camps there east, east coast definitely yeah it's like where 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 it's at mm-hmm. in terms of camps but yeah we used to always see other camps there and it's so cool to 
Yeah. Like, I feel like to speak to people and like just see like some camps, other camps I know got dropped off there for their days off. We'd always be like, that's so cool. Like yeah. we have to get like a domestic staff member to, you know, like- with, I'll give you a lift. Yeah, with mm-hmm. their cars. That's one thing that I wish I could take to camp. My a car. car. <laughs> My <Yeah>. car, <laughs> I wish. I know. There are some days I'm like, oh, I don't want to ask for a lift like, today. Mind but you, I say that. <laughs> it's always fine. I can't even- I'm not not like I'm the, the best driver. In the world. <laughs> I say that I wish I had my car. Like I drive if I was there. I literally drive to this train station and to home. At least the roads in America are bigger though. True. Have you driven in America? Yeah, I drove um, a little bit at camp, just to like the post office and back, or yeah. um, to the shop or something like that. Because I was added onto the insurance because I was over like a certain age, so yeah, I was able cool, to. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and then after camp as well, I drove quite a lot. Um, yeah, about four yeah, hours on the highway. Yeah, you did that that road trip, didn't you? Do- yeah, Dollywood. Was, yeah, cool. Dollywood. Cool. I, I, I remember you saying that now. <laughs> yeah, um, but it was absolutely fine driving. I was really, really scared and right. nervous at the beginning. I think my first year I didn't drive at all mm-hmm. when I was there, even though I was over 21. I think that's how old you had to be to go on the camps insurance. I'm not sure. Um, but it was only last year that I managed drove, to yeah. drive because I was just really, really scared. Yeah. But when you do, it's fine. Like the roads are huge. The parking bays are absolutely massive the cars are huge yeah the huge yeah that's like you thing. could fit like a 15 seater in a parking bay which yeah. is just and you I, could never do that here and i'd still be over the line <laughs> yeah still think we should take to <laughs> forward bay park no i think that's what that's one thing i'd like to do but mm-hmm. maybe this year maybe next year <laughs> i'll have to ease into it yeah but yeah that's one thing that i'm like wimpy about mm-hmm. Dri- i don't even like driving in england let alone <laughs> let alone on like in the US. So each week we're going to do a segment where we're going to answer some questions from you guys that you can send in on Instagram, social. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so the first one today, Libby, is we've got a question here for you. Is what are some camp rules people might not expect? So the examples are not phones, but dress codes, etc. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, hmm, hmm, rules people might not expect. The phone one is obviously a big one, and I think that's one a lot of people get like have questions about. Mm-hmm. So I can't speak for every camp, but at my camp, it's kind of like you can use your phone in time off as mm-hmm. as long as the campers aren't seeing them, just because the campers can't have their phones. Yeah. Um. So you know we can't be like flailing ours around. around. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was one I think that people probably ask about a lot but it's it's varied on Mm -hmm. each camp i would say like some camps i know aren't as fussed about phones like you can have them out as long as you're not on them all the time some camps i know it's like no phones no nothing like we can have ours time like as long as we've been reasonable with it Mm -hmm. like it's and i think i love about camp is like not being on your phone as much yeah anyway camp rules uh did you have any kind of like dress codes or anything at your camp that you kind of maybe like i don't know length of shorts or anything not like really we had to wear a staff t-shirt between like basically from while you were doing like activity periods throughout mm-hmm. the day so that would in theory be like nine and five afterwards for evening activity you don't have to yeah. we have like um a curfew so oh, okay like on your evening off you can go out go out for food or whatever do what you like you just have to like be signed in and back in your bunk by a certain time it's just like a safeguarding thing yeah. so they know kind of like where where everyone is and everything Mm-hmm. I can't think other camp rules. We have a specific place where we should cross the road. That's oh. one our camp. Um, we have like a guy that crosses the road for us because there's a road that runs between our camp. Not a busy one. It's just like oh, a residential okay. one. So you've got like a specific crossing at the oh, road. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, I think that's it for rules. That's a really yeah, good question. Though. That is a good question. Yeah, that's one I feel like I've not. Yeah. I think each camp will have slightly different, different rules, rules as well. Definitely. But I don't oh, think. We're no peanuts. No nuts. That's, a lot of that's camps one. have yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. For nut allergies and things, mm-hmm. where we have um, a nut-free camp, so we yeah. have um, sun butter, which is like, I don't know if you have it at I yours. Think we it's have like that little as well. sachets of peanut butter. I love it. We do have regular peanut butter. Like yeah. we're not a like peanut-free yeah. camp, but um, say one week, you know, there was a camper that had a peanut allergy, then it would be because oh, yours is different kids, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah, peanut-free. That's that's a one that I didn't yeah <laughs> I, I didn't know about um I love the sun butter people mm. like either love it or hate it I love it I have it on apples <laughs> my go-to cup <cups> now <laughs> amazing well um yeah I think that answered that one anyway but we have one more question for today um 
And this one is, what are your best snacks to buy in Walmart? Like, Just delicious. Like, can you explain what that is? <laughs> I don't know what they are. They're like, <laughs> like tiny little rice cakes, like this, this big. Yeah. They're different flavored flavors. Mm -hmm. Like there's like birthday cake flavor, cookie dough flavor. I'm obsessed with what them. What makes them different to a normal rice cake though? They're Do like they tiny. Have... Yeah, well, but, but what? I don't know. <laughs> they're like they're, they're not they're not rice cake texture oh, they okay. sell them in tk max in in england i have like five of them <laughs> uh, but i save them for special occasions it's like delicious without a doubt i, but I can't yeah. i can't describe them we we have them at camp as well mm -hmm. like we have something called canteen where you get you get given snacks and stuff we have them at camp because they're like um allergy free i can't they're like tiny little rice cakes like that big <laughs> so kind of like a snacker jack but with yeah, more flavor like a mini snacker jack but in a different texture like a they're not as thick they're like thinner yeah. i have to have some under my desk but i <laughs> could have demonstrated them but i don't even have them today um drizzlicious that's yeah. a good one um I'm getting all <laughs> into this question the cheddar and jalapeno um cheetos Oh yeah, I paid seven pound for a bag of them from an American American sweet shop in town. Um, not yeah. a chance. Cheese and jalapeno Dorito, not Doritos, Cheetos, yeah, hundred percent, and red velvet chips ahoy. They're really rogue. Do you think a rogue three? Yeah, they yeah. are actually. Like, That's I feel why... like the regular ones are kind of like you know peanut butter M and M's because they don't have them over here. Not my camp. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Oh my god. And then like all of the crisps. I feel like when you go to Walmart, there's just like rows and rows of like crisps and yeah the sweets chocolate and everything i know every single time i went to walmart i would buy um a crate of like cans of something so like dr pepper or something and keep it in the staff house so then on my break i'd be like oh i've got a little Again, sweet yeah. sweet fizzy treat nice. in there so nice. that was always what or like snapple or something like yeah. that kind of I don't like snapple. Oh, well it makes my teeth hurt you know like when <laughs> yeah. your teeth it's hurt, really sugary like, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'd say i'd say they're my th that's it as a rogue three you're very yeah you're very that's right that's good though yeah. people like the inside scoop yeah it, it's that maybe of, wouldn't yeah. know walmart <laughs> yeah get through, delicious but if you see them in tk max in england don't post them here. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love it's delicious. Oh, nice <laughs> so that is everything for today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening. Please join us next week where we're going to be talking about our experience with the camp leaders application process, going over a little bit about how we got placed at camp. So see you there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>